Good day, and welcome to another episode of Masonic Curious. Today we are here at the Newtonville Masonic Temple, located in Newton, Massachusetts, and we're actually going to be doing two episodes uh, of Masonic Curious here in this room called the Chamber of Reflection. And this is a room that the guys here at uh, Yosemite Demon Lake, Commanding Number 7, have been putting together for the last couple of years, and it is an awesome room for the candidate to uh, come in, reflect, and fill out the paperwork. Great room. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about the accessory of all accessories of a Knight Templar uniform. And that is, of course, the triangular skull of bone apron. Now, a couple of things before we begin. First, not all commanderies wore the apron or a apron. Matter of fact, my commandery, Cambridge Committee Number 42 of Cambridge Mass, founded in 1890, didn't wear aprons. That was one of the options they chose not to do, but others, of course, did. Also today, you're going to hear me talk about hardware in this episode. And what I mean by hardware is this cross swords, the skull, and the bones. All the metal parts of the apron, what I consider hardware. Uh, the other thing, too, before we get into the episode is uh, the triangular apron is not the only style apron that was worn <clears throat> by a commander. As John and I have mentioned a number of times, uh, it was up to the individual commanderies, not the grand encampment, not the grand commander of each jurisdiction for the most part, but the individual commanderies when they were formed to adopt their particular regalia, and that included the apron, if they chose to wear one. Also, the skull and bones are not the only decoration that is on a triangular apron, but today we're going to talk about this particular apron, the cross swords, skull, and bone, but we're going to talk about only this apron, the larger skull and bones. There were also a smaller square uh, skull and bones aprons, which we won't discuss today. Now, <clears throat> Brother Johnson had already done an episode a number of years ago, and if you haven't viewed that, I'd suggest you go back. He talked about his apron that he has in his collection. But today we're going to talk about the six different versions of this almost exact apron. So first... This is the first variation. It is the most common of all the Knight Templar aprons. It, the hardware is all silver. The trim is all in silver. The field is usually done in a black velvet. And for the most part, the backing is usually done in a black silk or a black cloth-like material does have a flap and both pieces form the triangle, the flap and the body of the apron. Now this one here dates to probably around the 1920s and I know that for two reasons. First, on the back of the apron, I don't know if you're going to make it out or not, but it says Boston Regalia Company. That was a company here in Massachusetts, basically in Boston, that sold Masonic Regalia. Uh, right around the 1900s, 20s, 30s, 40s. It was started by a gentleman named Samuel Leeton, who was at one time, uh, a part, um, worked with a Pollard company in Boston, Mass. A Pollard started around the late 1840s, was a tailor, and then began selling Masonic regalia. And uh, later on, he hired Samuel Leeton. Later, I believe, Leeton's son joined the firm and it became Pollard and Leeton. But Samuel Leeton himself started uh, Boston Regalia. The other thing too that tells me that it's an older apron is actually the flat ribbon ties. Now this is done not in silk, but more of like a, um, I would say more like a, almost like a rayon type of material. Uh, it is heavy duty. And the earlier aprons uh, usually had the braided cord 
black braided cord with the black tassels at the end. Those usually indicated the older aprons. The newer ones had the flat ribbon. So this is the first vision, uh, version of the uh, apron. Now, there's a great article from the Knights Templar magazine uh, that talks about uh, Knight Templar uh, uniform, and it's done by a collector who is a Knight Templar. Uh, the magazines are online. They are called the Knight Templar magazine. Uh, you want to look for the November 2018 and the January 2019 issues. They were a two-part uh, article all about the Knight Templar apron, and he goes into detail on certain things. Now, before we go into the second version, I have to partake because it is July. I'm sweating my butt off here, and so... Partake. And this goblet is actually a silver plated goblet from Cambridge Commandery number 42. Now, the second version of this apron, and unfortunately, I do not have all the versions here with me today. I wish I did, but I don't. But once this video gets placed on our Facebook account, I will have photographs that will show the other variations of this apron. The second variation. Exactly the same as this. It's all silver, silver border, black, all the hardware is silver, but around the skull and bones are 12 small silver stars representing the 12 positions on a Knight Templar um, altar. Partake. The goblets were purchased by Reed and Barton of Boston. Around 1880, uh, 1890, 1891. Now the next version, we're going to go right back to the same apron, except this time all of the hardware is in gold. Now some of you might be saying, well, Keith, gold represents a past eminent commander. This is where things get a little tricky. Yes, I know the Grand Encampment has rulings that the gold will be used for a past commander. But as John and I have mentioned many times before that each commandery adopted their own regulations on the uniform and that included the color of the hardware and that was on the sword the baldric the chapeau uh, the member of uh, the officers jewels and if they had the apron and also on the sword uh, the belt the buckle so the trim would all be in gold black velvet Black, uh, the gold uh, cross swords, gold skull, gold bones. Now, yes, past commander could have worn that to apron, but it was also for the commander that adopted the gold hardware as the color of all the metal on their uniforms. Pate. Now, the goblet was purchased by Cambridge Commandery. It has Cambridge Commandery of uh, Knight Temple on it. It also had 12 silver candlesticks as well. The, I believe I'm at the fourth uh, version now. The fourth version of this apron, we're going to go back to the silver, exactly the same. All silver, silver trim, swords, skull and bone, black, black backing. But this time, the flap and the body had silver fringe, and that was done with silver bullion thread. Pate. The silver is basically used in the commandery uh, for the libations, which is part of the degree work in the commandery. Uh, it is used at their altar. Uh, all commanderies use basically silver, uh, either nickel plated, silver plated, or other silver material. And it is also used for other functions of the commandery as well as during their Christmas observance. The fifth version of this apron, uh, we're going to go back to the gold. 
So trim is in gold, swords are in gold, skull, bones in gold. But this time there is fringe, but the fringe is all in gold. Along the flap and along the border. And that was done in gold bullion thread. Now the last version, I wish I really had one of these aprons to show you because it's very unusual. And not all commanderies had these particular aprons. Okay? Now remember earlier that I mentioned the backing is in black. Well, in some of these commanderies, the backing of the apron is in green. And in the middle of the field of the apron is a red passion cross. Why? Well, as a Knight Templar, he would wear the apron like this. But when they're conferring the order of the the illustrious order of the Red Cross, he would wear it with the green, with the red. So again, those aprons are relatively hard to find. I've seen the backings in the green done in cloth and in silk, and unfortunately the silk, because it being silk, has all along a lot of them have deteriorated to the point that they've been pulled right off. But you will find those in some commanderies. There is a seventh, but I sort of reluctant on talking about that because I've only seen an image. And all of these aprons that I've spoken about today, and you don't have to take my word for it, do your own research, come up with your own conclusions. Never ever take my word for it. But <clears throat> the images that I have seen, or ones that I have seen in person, are the ones that I have talked, spoken about today. The seventh version it, the image is a little sketchy, and that comes off the Grand Encampment uh, website, and it shows a certain knight in the uh, triangular apron with the swords, skull, and bones, but on one side of the skull shows a nine-point star, and I cannot make out what is on the other side of the skull. Hopefully, someone out there has a better picture or maybe one of those aprons in their commandry. Uh, guys, if you have something that I haven't mentioned here today, send us a photograph. Uh, you can either to our email at all one word, Masonic Preservation Society at gmail.com, or even when we post this on our Facebook, you can leave a comment and a photograph, or you can PM us uh, on Facebook. So, with that, that's the six different versions that uh, we are doing today. I want to thank you very much for viewing. Uh, I'm sweating like a pig here, so I have to shut off the light now and go bye-byes. Uh, and that's about it. So keep watching us. Remember, thumbs up. I'm getting a laugh by the crew. Uh, watch us on Facebook. Don't forget to hit that little red button. No, not that one. The one that says subscribe. And watch some of our past uh, videos. With that, thank you. And we might as well just jump right into the 